Good evening. It's Saturday the 14th of January and it's just after five o'clock and this is, as you can see, it's uh, dark outside. Um, my good YouTube friend Chris from Bridlington, Yorkshire, um, sent me uh, an email with this picture in it and uh, this is a Mercedes 240D and I had mentioned this motor a few times that I had driven one and uh, I drove and, and Tanya obviously drove it as well uh, for several years um, probably about 2004 through to 2008 or something like that I, I can't honestly remember um, and we used to uh, have a good laugh about this car because it was slow. It uh, sort of like not to 50 in about five minutes. Um, it was heavy and it was cumbersome and it was, uh, we, we nicknamed it the, uh, the flying sofa because it was like sitting on a sofa and you bounced about and we have happy memories of this car and it was bulletproof it just went on and on and according to uh, Chris and his information um, this is a 1979 model and it sold back in 1979 for about £5,000, which was quite a bit of money back then. What can I tell you about the uh, Mercedes 240D? It was a, a heavy motor. Um, weight was £3,300. Uh, uh, it uh, could reach 100 miles an hour if you had time enough to spare um, it was as I say bulletproof it just the engine went on and on and on and it was indestructible it was a heavy heavy beastie um, they were produced between uh, 1973 and 1985 and whenever they were originally put out they, they were quite pricey um, they had all sorts of add-ons like heated seats and electric windows which were a novelty back then and um, of course they had the, the leather upholstery and uh, this is this is the same colour of car that we had it's sort of sort of mustard yellow which uh, certainly drew the eye but I'm told that um, Mercedes actually gave out a, a badge celebrating uh, those cars that had reached uh, 250,000 miles on the clock and we had done, I don't know, we were well into the, the second 100,000 and still the, the motor just purred on. Um, apparently the, um, the highest mileage is recorded by a Greek taxi driver who uh, clocked up 3 million miles. Now I think he was uh, alternating between three different engines, but 3 million miles, a million miles for any car is, is, is top notch. Uh, and our kids used to love this car. Um, it was heavy on fuel, of course. There's what uh, Wikipedia says about it. Um, and I'm not going to read through all of that. You can look that up for yourself if you're interested. Yes, um, I have personal reasons for remembering uh, that Mercedes 240D. Um, it was almost my breakthrough into the movies because in 2007 I just happened to be in, uh, in the waiting room of my uh, dentist down at Stranmillis uh, waiting for Paula to uh, check out my Nashers. Uh, and I was sitting in the waiting room and I heard this, you know, knocking on the window out into Chlorine Gardens and, uh, you know, there are two or three people in the waiting room 
and uh, I never thought anything more about it, never even bothered looking. But I was proceeding to um, get a scan, look through, look over by, uh, by, by Paula whenever this uh, lady was issued, ushered, ushered. <laughs> Whenever this lady was ushered um, into the waiting area and she happened to be uh, props, she was in the props uh, department of a, a hat tricks film company which made films in Northern Ireland at that time and uh, she, she was asking who owned the mustard uh, Mercedes part out, you know, the front. And I'm wondering, did I scrape her down the road or something or other, or cut her up or something or other, but um, it didn't, uh, it, it turned out okay. All she wanted was uh, to ask me, would I like to be in the latest, uh, James Nesbitt, uh, Maxine Peake uh, film, which was uh, a remake and a retake of the Cinderella story. And they wanted to use my uh, Mercedes 240D mustard as the pumpkin. And they were going to use top of the range Mercedes as the other carriages that would take the ugly sisters to the ball. So one of the other dentists um, is shouted out, of course he'll do it. Um, and then he, he put a, an ad on, he said, uh, and he does his own stunts too. Uh, so having never been in any kind of film production, uh, I was, uh, you know, I was a bit iffy about this. But anyway, uh, the following Saturday, I drove down to Killalea Castle, very scenic castle, uh, privately owned, and drove into the front lawn driveway area, and there was the whole uh, shooting gallery. There was all the the people that, uh, involved, and there were quite a number uh, involved in this uh, making of this film. So. Uh, on I goes, uh, you know, fools rush in where angels fear to tread, that's me. <laughs> I hadn't a clue what I was getting myself into, and this was probably about half nine in the morning. Uh, so anyway, what happened next was, um, you know, over the course of the day, I, I was required to drive my Mercedes round and round Killalay with uh, two passengers in the back and they weren't any, just any old passengers and uh, the front seat, passenger seat was removed and a guy with a big massive shoulder held camera sat crouched down on a little stool and he was videoing, filming uh, Maxine Peak sitting in the back seat of my car and she was talking to this lady over here. Now I don't know whether you'll recognize her or not, but she um, was, uh, she starred in, um, as, in uh, she was one of the uh, families in uh, EastEnders back in 2007 or there or thereabouts. So these were not Mickey Mouse actors and actresses, and of course James Ness, but he was playing Prince, Char playing Prince Charming to Maxine Peake's um, Cinderella. So the whole day progressed, and there was a lot of, I have to admit, there was a lot of sitting around, waiting around, and there was a big uh, bus that had been converted into a canteen, and you can go and you could go on to eat whatever you liked but um, I was driving these ladies round and I was absolutely dumbstruck you know I didn't say anything I was absolutely petrified because I didn't know about uh, you know all this clapperboard stuff and 
uh, what, what you know the procedure or nothing like like that I hadn't a clue so I was starting off the, the Mercedes on a few occasions before I was meant to and of course that incurred the wrath of of the director or whatever else so I, I got a few uh, flies in my ear but I eventually cottoned on to what I was supposed to be doing uh, round and round we went for numerous takes and, and all the rest of it and uh, I, as I say I never spoke a word to the ladies in the back until uh, right at the end I must have done about three or four circles circuits round uh, Killalay until right at the end I said to the ladies you know and we were pulling in and I said I hope you didn't think I was rude because I didn't speak I'm not normally like this and I said, uh, you know, really, I didn't know what to say, so I didn't say anything. And <laughs> it was quite funny. They both chirped up, and they said, "Ah, oh, that's all right, love." And they offered me uh, some Maltesers that they were eating. <laughs> A very interesting day. It went on from you know ten o'clock through to about oh, must have been half nine or ten o'clock at night and I never approached Jimmy Ness but he was standing you know in the middle of the courtyard and obviously going over his lines and stuff like this and nobody went near him uh, it was a very lonely type of um, you know position for somebody to be in because uh, nobody wants to go near them or annoy them you know but they, you know there were long periods of time whenever uh, you know you, you weren't needed before the camera so but that's the way acting is. Uh, and Jimmy Nesbitt has gone on to uh, greater and better things. And Maxine Peake is, you know, an international star as well. Um, so that was my claim to fame with the uh, 240D. Um, I was well chuffed. I was absolutely chuffed. I couldn't believe it whenever whoever it was, this lady came up to me afterwards and, and said, uh, well, um, that's you done for the day. Um, and she said to me, and I was stupid, she said to me, would 200 pounds be enough? And I said, oh yes. What I should have said was, could you not make it 250? <laughs> 